So I'm recording this right after I did my video on nature versus nurture and why I think it shouldn't be an issue, but unfortunately I think it probably is doomed to be an issue for quite some time. Well, um, this is part of a larger issue that I have in the fact that I think that a lot of times arguments end up putting us sort of on the back foot when it comes to civil rights issues. This was one case, um, I'm going to bring up two others pretty immediately. Um, Same-sex marriage was one that I think was put on the back foot for a lot of reasons, really, but I'll focus probably on a couple. And I have brought up birth control rights in the past on this channel as well, and yeah, that's sort of a topic that really does dovetail with this. So since I once did a video on the topic of birth control and this vein, I'm going to make this short. My basic beliefs on this are that, well, yes, there are medical issues that require birth control. I think it's really fucked up that we have to sort of frame everything around the issue of medical as though uh, women couldn't possibly be thinking about birth control for the purposes of, say, sexual intercourse. Because, really, there shouldn't be a problem here. The fact that we have to pretend that uh, the women who are doing this are doing it solely for medical purposes comes largely from the fact that the immediate reaction from the anti-birth control side was, oh, hey, these are just sluts who want us to pay for sex. And so immediately the response was to try and downplay any sort of sexual implications, even family planning amongst, you know, married individuals, people who might actually have already had kids and might not, you know, want to have more. Which is interesting because if you have too many kids, then you're an idiot who should have, like, considered things beforehand, but that's kind of what family planning is. I think this probably ends up being detrimental if you care about, you know, women's rights and a woman's right to choose because now you've taken sex off the table because people are quite literally attempting to slut shame a portion of the population rather than saying, hey, that's not cool. Women should be able to do what they want with their own bodies. Suddenly, women are pure and virtuous. This is a medical thing. And oh my God, I never even thought about having sex on birth control. Jump cut to marriage equality. Now, this battle has technically been won, but I suspect that there will be problems with it for quite some time. This is the way things work in our society, unfortunately. But uh, even before the same-sex marriage issue had been addressed by the Supreme Court, uh, the same-sex sex argument had been addressed by the Supreme Court. The sodomy laws were ruled unconstitutional in, well, 2003. Uh, yeah, think about that for a second the next time you want to go and talk about how the Muslims like to uh, criminalize homosexuality. We're less than 15 years removed from when we were criminalizing homosexuality. And even after those laws were deemed unconstitutional, there were battles. This is the way of things. However, the, the point here is that we've had marriage equality for a couple of years now, whereas we've had uh, same-sex rights for, or sexual rights anyway, for significantly longer. Just not as significantly as it should have been, all things considered. But, yeah, I mean, here's a dirty little secret about LGBT individuals. We can have sex without being married. And I know this isn't a shock to our legislature because so many legislators seem to be having sex outside of marriage while also being married, but it's the gays who are the horrible infidelity types and they're the moral upstanding married couples. But yeah, we had to suddenly rephrase things because they decided to get in our bedrooms and we were all, well, we did our best to frame things in terms of, like, the quote-unquote normal couple, the gay couple who is just like white suburbia but with two men or two women, and the focus usually seemed to be about two men because, of course, it would be. But the major thrust here, if you'll pardon the unintentional pun, was to defend against this idea that, you know, we just wanted to have a lot of sex because... That is exactly the only reason you want to get married. And, I mean, the thing for 
me and a lot of people is I generally don't give a fuck about marriage specifically. It's the issue of rights and responsibilities and whether or not my partner and I will end up being recognized as having equal rights. So this is very important and not necessarily about sex or the like, but, um, yeah, the problem is that we immediately framed it in a way that threw a lot of people under the bus. And I think that this is very detrimental if your goal is, in general, to promote LGBT rights, to support people, because this really didn't support anyone except for the photogenic, white bread, middle American version of homosexuality, which is still the only version that's really acceptable. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that most heterosexual and cisgender people aren't normal either, but the standard gets set that to be accepted as a member of the LGBT community in the broader society, you now have to be one of the good, wholesome ones, because, again, that's all that they really want to celebrate on TV. In fact, there's still a lot of people who will demean pride parades. And I don't go to pride parades. That sort of shit isn't for me. I don't go to gay clubs or LGBT clubs or whatever you want to call them because that shit isn't for me either. But they have every right to do that if that's what they want. Otherwise, it's not equality because it's not actually equal. There's a disparity between the good gays and the bad gays, the wholesome gays and the unwholesome gays, the, the moral upstanding ones and the immoral deviant ones. And that's something that the LGBT community and its allies should actively fight against. So, yeah, this has gone on longer than I intended. I'm going to cut it there. Thanks for listening. Amaranth out.